So you talked a little bit about what you do. So let's, let's talk about that a little bit more. So you do, you go into your client's home and you help style them. I watched a video that you posted maybe on your blog or something like that where, where you, um, at that time you had blonde hair. Yeah, I was watching, I was like, oh, this had to be a little while ago. Yes, but it was website. super cool. Yeah. Do you do a lot of that? In addition to the hair and the color and all that stuff, um, there. So this is this is how I feel like my company is separate from other, let's say, hairstylists. I don't have overhead anywhere. One day a week, I rent a station at a salon in the suburbs where I worked at the big salon years ago um, that I came from. So one day a week, I'm there all day. All the other times, days of the week, I have a studio in my home, and then I do on site. Yeah. So I have a client coming over in a little bit. We're gonna do a cut and color, and then I'm going to my client's house in the Gold Coast, not that far from here. I'm doing color cut and keratin. So I like to be in my clients' homes because I just really have such an intimate experience, Absolutely. and I like that my clients even come here. I have my little doggies to greet them. I always have a glass of wine or tea or whatever it is they like. Sure. You know, sometimes my boyfriend comes home and he gets to meet them. So I just feel like it's such an intimate experience being in a salon. First of all, it's so loud in there. I can't hear the clients in front of me. And it's just so much hustle and bustle and so much craziness. I do like being at the salon one day a week. I just feel like those are my roots. And I just like that, yeah. I don't know, consistency, security, whatever. Sure. And I like being around all the other like drama and all the fun. But then one day a week, I <laughs> know. There's drama in the yes, salon. I mean, like at one day a week, that's plenty. And I go there, I don't, I rent a chair. They redo the place, make it look pretty, decorate this, that, the other. I just come in, do my clients, pay my rent, and leave. And you so, also, you have product there as well. Yeah. yeah you've got, she's yeah. got some great pieces, but you, that's not the only salon that you have stuff at. No, I have my accessories in four different uh, salons. Um, it, that just was organic too. Like, I don't know. I, again, I just, I'm always, I'm, my mind is always like, oh, how can I market this? Yeah. How can I sell this? Yeah. How can I work with this person? How can I, I, I don't even like, it's just, I wake up and I think about those things. So I feel, so my accessories are in a couple different salons, but this is a good story about one of my accessory clients. I had my accessories in a salon um, with these gentlemen at the salon that I rent my station at. They have another salon that they own in the, the suburbs. Brothers. Yes, the brothers. Okay. Yes, okay. they're so cute. And yeah. I should mention names, whatever. They're yeah. like darling. Yeah. So I said, hey, you guys, you want to like sell some accessories at your salon? I'll give you a cut of everything you sell, whatever. Great. So we've done that now um, for a couple of years. I bring them some accessories. They had a client. Now, this is a client that I actually have never met. I never saw a picture of her. Okay. She's been my client for three years now, four years now. And wow. I say client like she's my accessory client. Sure. The first time she bought stuff, I think it was at that salon or maybe it was at our salon, but she came to see that one of them, the brothers okay. to get her hair done. Yeah. So I, I can't remember the accessories because it's three years ago. She bought it from their salon or our salon. Spent $250 on accessories from, nice. from me. I got, I get, it must have been at our salon because then they called me and said, we, we did our charge. Okay, sure. So two hundred three dollars. Never met the woman. Awesome, great. Yeah. Okay. So the, this was at Christmas time. She does Christmas shopping for her fam, um, her um, people she works, her in her office. She's a manager. Okay. Okay. So she, and she bought some stuff for her sisters and a couple of those people. Next year, the next year, which was two years ago, I followed up with her. Come like November, and I'm like, hey, you know, did you want to shop again? Awesome. So then I personally shopped specifically for her. Oh, she nice. bought five hundred dollars worth of stuff. Huh. Awesome. Yeah. I asked her to get on my weekly email list. After that. Now the year, now this past year, she spent over one thousand dollars with me. I've never met her, never seen her. Only recently has she sent me pictures. I'm like, okay, you're buying all these stuff. Like, you're for your sisters, your daughter. Your, can you send me pictures? Can I see what you look like? Yes, yes. And so we're like buddies. We text each other, and then and then throughout the year, a couple times beginning of this year, she bought some spring accessories. She bought a bracelet for a friend for her birthday. So now we text, and like she's like. Just the other day, she texted me and said, I have, she has a huge order for Christmas. I go, when you need to buy in November, great. Let me follow back up first week of November. I'll do the shopping. That's awesome. Whatever. So that's how that, like, just me having my accessories at a couple different salons sure. exposed me in a way that brought me in over $2,000. Yeah. I'm just some, like, texting. And she, like, she's like, I trust you. Yeah. Like, you, you know, she's my ideal customer avatar in regards to accessories. She sure. trusts me. She's like, uh, uh, you know, this is what I need. Here's what my sister looks like. I stuff for men for women you know whatever it's at her office oh so, you do for men too yeah she, this like gloves and like the, oh, okay. it was like um she had winter gloves like um and uh, scarves and hats for people in her that's at her awesome office. but so that that's how that progressed and that's because i had my accessories at other salons yeah so that's how that went <laughs> i love that i think that it's really important to do things organically instead of yeah. first because that's what yeah. that is it and you cultivate those relationships and if I could afford you, I would totally be coming to see you as well. But I can't afford you right no, now. You I'm still recovering I'll, from my fashion no. whole debacle. I'll give you some accessories. Oh Just my for gosh. You're as your guest. Oh, you're <laughs> awesome. So you kind of mentioned this before, but what do you love the most about what you do? Oh gosh. 
You have such a great <laughs> spirit and energy, and I think that you just really genuinely care about other people. Yeah. And I think that's why you are you are so successful. Thank you. I would say I have one prayer that I say every morning. So this is this will answer the question. Okay. Hopefully. Okay. I say, universe, God, please use me for what I was put on this earth for. Please help me be kind. Please help me be patient. And please help me be thoughtful. And then I just um, do a little meditating and I read every morning. I pet my doggies and whatever. And then I just I feel like I this is what I'm on earth for. Sure. I, I just I feel like this is my calling. Um, I, I can go any which way I want. I'm really excited about this new online course. I feel like now I can reach across the world, across the states, That's gonna be awesome. and, and hopefully inspire other stylists. You know, and not only just people that I can see or go to in the city, the suburbs here. Now I can go All over. worldwide. Yeah. And then make an income and an impact doing it, and then maybe inspire others. Maybe when I'm teaching someone, they could teach someone else. Absolutely. You know. So after I do this course, I plan on doing like a, a an, an addition that would be like a fee, but like. I love doing up and I got, yeah. um, it, when I worked at Tricosi, they sent me on this, this training. They taught, this guy, who's awesome, he taught me how to do up us and like one person from each salon, there was okay. like 20 of us that went, taught us how to do up like really fast. So okay. I do about three up and two and a half up an hour. Oh wow. But when it comes down to it, that's hundreds of dollars an hour that I'm making that, so that, that's, a, that's one of the sure. things that, 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 first of all, I love to do it. The client's happy and like boom, boom, boom. You know, and so like even that is like just like I'll teach a class on how to do updos and do them every two, do yeah. two and a half an hour. Yeah. So when you go do a wedding party and you have ten girls, you can get done in five hours and then you make your all your money. Sure. So I like to be efficient and but then also do a good job and then also connect with whoever is yes. in front of me. Yeah, I love that. I Thanks. think that's great. You, I, Thank you. I, I, you can definitely tell in your posts and everything that you that you talk about that you love what you do and it's it's so it's Thank you. great to see. What are some common roadblocks that you've experienced starting your business? Ooh, at the beginning? Sure, or now, whatever. I oh, mean, because that's I think oh. that's important to talk about. <laughs> well, okay, so one thing that I was probably bad at before that I feel like I've gotten really good at now <laughs> is trusting my gut. So if it's with it, taking a client that I know can make you a lot of money, let's just say, and I'm like, you know what, she's you know not that crazy, I can handle her, no. I do not waste my energy or my time or my team. Sometimes if we take a bride and she's been so crazy, she's driving all of us nuts. Yeah. So I'm not going to yeah. even torture my other freelancers or she, you know the person who manages the bridal contracts and has to email the bride constantly or, or all the things. Or, or my boyfriend might have to complain about it and cry about it all the time. <laughs> so that and like so that's one thing. I trust my gut more now. I didn't before. I just it was maybe too. I guess I'm more business savvy now. Sure. And then now I'm very um, protective. This is more recent because I have so much on my plate now. I'm very protective of my time. So if I, you know, like I'm, I don't know, whatever. Like, whatever. I, I noticed that today because I told her I was running a little bit behind. I had some issues with my my job, and I was like, I was running behind, and she was like, okay, so what time? One thirty? One fifty? I was like, whoa, she's on it. <laughs> Well, only because I then so that I didn't even care. You're third, like a little late. Didn't, didn't matter. Really matter. Maybe a plenty of time. But I'm like, okay. So I got 30 extra minutes now. Now what do I do with that 30 minutes? Is I'm gonna do this homework I'm doing, you know, whatever I'm doing. So this. Sure. Right? So I just yeah. it's fine. Like I don't I, I run late too. It is what it is. The city is crazy. So I totally get. I respect yeah, it. I, I was just like I had noted when you said that. I was like, yeah, I can see that. But yeah. You have to be though. Yeah. So I just I feel like I'm just more like um I don't even like spending time with my boyfriend. I'm like. You know what? Saturday nights, I'm not checking my phone. I'm not put checking it anywhere. I'm spending time with him, yeah. or whatever it is. Or if I'm with my my grandma or my mom, or even just I'm like on Tuesdays I do this thing uh, all day and blah blah. And on Wednesdays I do this, and I'm not letting anyone else come in try sure. to make an appointment or whatever. Where before I used to be like, I'll just take the client, I'll just take it. I'm like, no, actually, I'm sorry, I'm not available. Which everyone understands. They yeah. don't even question it. But I, yeah, it was like me feeling like, oh, I need to accommodate them. And blah. Sure. I'm like, no, I say no a lot more now than I say yes, and then I have a lot real strict boundaries. It's strict, but like, you well, know, your time, your time, boundaries. time is money, and time is something that we all only have so much of. Exactly. You know, yes. everybody has the same amount of time in the day, yep. and it's it's important to you know prioritize. So yep. I totally get it. I mean, I was just like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, got, I got to hurry up and get this shower. Yeah, I didn't even care what you time you were coming. But I just wanted to know so I could plan, so I could do whatever. Like if I have thirty extra minutes, I'm like, oh, actually, I worked out longer. Did you? you said, I was like, good. But now at that point, I hadn't chopped in the shower. Yet. I'm like, perfect. So awesome. it's fine. It's, I knew in advance, and I just figured it out. Yeah. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I like this question. I can't wait to hear your answer. But Ooh. what do you think are some of the the misconceptions people have of you and what you do. 
Uh, I think that a lot of people, um, I have some family members that like bust my balls. <laughs> <laughs> and like, like my brother, for example. And I, I'm sorry, bro, if you're gonna watch this. He's like, you know, did you work today? Like you texted me back at like 11 o'clock and I checked you at six in the morning. Like what time do you get up at? <laughs> And I'm like, I know he's like busting my, my, you know, he's my brother, my older brother, but I'm like, well, I finished my client last night at midnight. So I mean, I'm being dramatic, but like, right. And then I decided to sleep in and not that I would tell him this, but yeah. and then I spent 20 minutes reading my book. Cause that's what work, help, works for me. And then I walked the dogs, took a shower and then I checked my text messages yeah. and that was at 11 AM. So, or some of my friends will say, Oh, I know you want to hang out on Sunday. Cause I know you're off on Mondays. That just annoys me because I'm like, yeah. Yeah, sure, fine. Yeah. Do I take clients on Sundays and Mondays typically? No, but I work all day on Mondays. Even my boyfriend comes with me and goes, can I come home now? Are you done with what you have to do? Sure. So I think that they, the people probably don't think it's as much work and energy as it is, and I'm not one to complain to anyone. I'll be like, oh, complain or cry or whatever to like my boyfriend. Two of my good friends that I have on text message, all, I always text them. I'm like, someone talk me off the cliff, please. And then yeah. like my mom, my brother, and my sister-in-law, like those two handful of people are like my close, close go-to. And if I'm gonna complain or cry or whatever it is, it's gonna be them. It's not gonna be to my client. It's not gonna be sure. on social media. So people probably think it's easier than it is, or I don't work as hard as I do, or I don't yeah. know what. So For sure. that, that maybe that that's it. So yeah. yeah, but really it's not, that's the opposite. And I, pro I, and I think that probably, and we talked a little bit about this and I'm not gonna say what I said, but that um, people probably don't look at you and they probably don't realize how smart of a businesswoman that you are. And I just love it. No, yeah, I'm sure. They kind of do. And don't think like that, I mean, hairstylist is like, it's a real job, but it, yeah. it is. And what yeah. you've done for your brand, because yeah. your brand, yeah. you've, I mean, you've, you've got all these different services that you offer and you've really marketed yourself the right way. Yeah. And it's just, it's just funny to me. I'm, I'm sure people's first impression of you is yep. not the right one. And that's Absolutely. why I just love it. Yeah, for sure. They can underestimate me all day long. <laughs> Good. When, when they Google me in a year and I'm worth $1.4 million, then they can ah, then, then, yes. then, then, then buy. I don't care. I love that. And you know what? How about I show you how to do what I did? You want to know how to do that? <laughs> no, you're very hardworking. I, I, love, I love watching everything you got going on. Thank you. So, I mean, it, let's, let's tell everybody how they can contact you to use your services. I think go to my website at glamhairs.com. You can message me on Instagram. It's at glamhairs on Facebook, Glam Harris. So and, and all all the things or Gina at glamhairs.com. Awesome. <laughs> I will put all those links Thank in you. the description of the um, the episode as well. Well, I don't have any other questions. Is there anything else you'd like to share with everybody before we wrap things up? Um, not not really. I think I, I think we. Just, Got it all. <laughs> awesome. Well, Gina, thank you so much for being on my thank podcast. You. I'm going to put all the links where anybody can contact you uh -huh. and they can find updates on this course that you're putting together for cool. next year. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited for you. I just thank think you. it's awesome. I always love coming and seeing her. We don't spend a lot of time with each other, but when I do see her, she's got such great energy and always full of positivity. So uh, maybe there'll be a part two when she releases her course oh. so we can get some more exposure on that. Yeah. But thank you. Um, thanks for listening, guys. As always, I appreciate the support. Don't forget to subscribe and share. And remember, to live your best life, you must live labels free. Mm. That was great. Isn't that fun? Yes.